So after we've just started the after stack checklist, we've already covered the first step, which is the, the nose wheel and steering check. And then in the real aircraft, uh, we would make um, a series of tests that um, as lo uh, the author of the tutorial says it takes almost 20 minutes to complete on your own without having your um, flight officer and virtual flight engineer. So these uh, check-ins have been reduced to, to a reasonable amount. Now the first thing we are going to do um, is to, well let's do it directly. Now, um, by mistake I did this step before and I, it wasn't recording. So the first thing we're going to find is that the mechanical uh, light uh, is going to be red. So we need to click to cancel. It's going to be in this color. We need to click to cancel. And then we're going to have, uh, have a look to pay attention to this indicator. This is going to indicate us um, what is the position of the elevons. The elevons is um, is how the, the control surfaces are called in Concord. So if we use our joke, uh, just that you can see, if we use our joke, you can see the actual position of each of these elevons. Now, you see the movement is very, very slow. The reason is that we are working on the mechanical system. I'm going to pause the simulation because we are we're burning a lot of fuel. Now, uh, remember the Concord had uh, three, sorry, number two. Concord had three hydraulic system, green and blue are the, the common systems and then the yellow is the emergency. But uh, if any of these systems, if all these systems fail, Concord could uh, fly in manual mode. Now, manual mode was very limited and was very hard and difficult for the pilot to control the aircraft, but it's just um, at the last resource. By default and without hydraulic power engaged, as we can see, we only have got manual channel on. So what we have to do now is, okay, we are going to change our controls for the outer and middle elbows to channel green. And we see those are now in green. And we reset this change. Green, reset, green, reset. Or our surfaces are now in green. And, and the only thing we've got to do is check, check that they are working normally and expected. Half the rudder and all the other, all the other um, elevators. Once again, we change to the blue channel, which is the normal channel in flight, and then reset. And once again, we check that everything is working as expected. Okay, so everything is as expected. So we continue. Now we need to check that the autopilot um, can now engage on its own. So we go to the autopilot uh, here and check. In this case, it goes down. Sometimes it happens. I don't really know why. but sometimes it just doesn't stay. Now there's a second check to do, and if you, if, if, if with this second check, you cannot still engage the autopilot, then uh, something is wrong and you've got to revise everything. The next step is to engage the stabilization and filling, the artificial filling. As I said, uh, Concord didn't tra transmitted the real uh, fillings from, from the elevons, but uh, it was not a direct, but um, a powered assisted um, filling. So we engage the stabilization and our, oh, I'm sorry, the electric, the electric trim. Uh, I, I did it before Rome. This is um, an important step. It was just the moment where, where, where I was confused and wasn't recording. After hitting the mechanical jump, we need to engage the electric trim. And it's very important to set always electric trim two first. I have no idea why, but it's just what the manual says. Electrical trim to electric trim one. And continue with the artificial and auto stop. And we check now, and yes, we've got now the autopilot. We treat it off, the, the alarm goes on. We click 
to erase and we are set to go. Now, um, <coughs> we need to check if we need the anti-acing required, but the temperature is above three degrees, so no need to worry about that. Brakes fan on, they are on, we checked it before, yeah, they continue on. Uh, I can stop now the, the chronometer, not necessary anymore. And then we continue, and as I said, the idle switches have to be low, they are low. The warnings, they were tested, but now we test them again. Control shift number one. Control shift, ah, uh, sorry, control shift number one. We check the doors, they are all okay. We continue. The hydraulics, uh, we checked them before when only two engines were running. Now we want to make sure that all the indications are correct. Now with the four engines running. And now with the electrical, uh, we need to activate an emergency system that will provide us with uh, electrical power in case of engine failure during takeoff. Control shift number eight. And then in this switch, it's in auto, we click to ground bypass, right click. And then we continue with the checklist to the taxi checklist. Now, nose go down to five degrees. In theory, we should wait until the visor, well, uh, I can, you can click and hold or just right click until the visor is down. And now once again, uh, sorry, and once again, five degrees down. That's in theory what you should do. But uh, if you, it, you can hardly see it, but there is a red light that indicates you whenever the nose is not yet in the required position. Again, you here can see also if, if the nose goes up or down, so that you know when the movement has finished, even if you are not seeing the, the nose itself. Now, the brakes, we need to check that they are in the normal and the emergency, <coughs> sorry, and and in the park position so we uh, click shift number six emergency position normal position continue we checked that the flight instrument have no checked flags that they are all working correctly we have a look at them the only indication is the flight indicator so even if it's not required at this very moment I always switch on the flight director and make sure there are no uh, flags available. Now we need to um, flight control com com check that they are all in the blue channels and there are no warning lights, no warning lights, yeah, no warning lights, blue channels. We continue um, complete uh, check that the anti skid are off. But we need to be above 10 knots. So this is a checklist that was performed during taxi, but because we are just one crew, it's very difficult to do all these checks at the same time. We'll check it later. Now we need to make sure the trims are set correctly. The trims for a center of gravity of 53.5, we need to set it to 2.5. And that's what we're going to do. So shift number six, and here we've got the, the trim. Uh, I use it the controls in my yoke. I go down to 2.5. If you just leave the mouse uh, over um, and don't move it, it will, you, you will see the indication. Okay, checked and uh, continue. Now we need to the throttle master check that even if we change the position of the throttle master that the engine is going to be stable that we are not going to see any noticeable change in the engines even if we change from the male to the alternate control we see that all engines stay very stable even if we change the throttle master from one position to the other next the drain master heaters now have to be on something very weird is we've got two positions we can set them on in the upper position and on in the lower position doesn't matter so i always use the lower positions but uh, we've got two to choose from the pressure static heaters on so press pressure static heaters on and then the ads and standby heaters 
in TT inhibited and on. We, we have to change this setting just after departure. TT inhibited on, so all up, left click. Continue. Now, the engine control schedule, we already set it, if you remember, to uh, fly over, and we already set the engine for T N1 limited to, 90, to 88%. Uh, control shift number two, if you remember, fly over and 88%. Continue the air condition. We need to check that they are within approximately 20 psi and that we've got a mass flow. So, um, shift number two, we check that the 20 psi approximately and then we check the mass flow. Shift number two and the second panel, we see here that the mass flow is flowing, that we have some air flow. In this case, there's a little difference between each of the of the engines but around three more or less continue cross the uh, cross feed valves um, they are shut can't remember the cross field valves uh, oh yes yeah, sorry here the cross bead no, sorry, sorry. Ah, the cross bleed, sorry. Yes, the air conditioning. Uh, we have them already off, if you remember. We shut them, but now we check that they are shut. Sorry. Now, uh, this is a, a procedure to check that the, the, um, the secondary nozzles that they are working correctly, some settings on the engine. And this is quite complicated. Well, complicated. It requires several steps. So. Shift number two uh, to have the engines, uh, the flight engineer panel. We click first on, on the right hand lower uh, panel and then we check in the just in the one that is above, which is called nozzle override. Now we click here all the way to the left to engines one and four and these two engines two and three. And then in the nozzle override panel, we right click to set the engine uh, security test. Now all these blue lights blink. These blue lights are the engine reverse. What we've got to do now is to push the uh, throttles forwards about 50% uh, and we have to check that the N2 don't increase by more than a 6%. So we check throttles half the way and we notice a small increase in power as expected. We put again the throttles in the idle position and now we've got to do the same but with the reverse. We select the reverse idle clicking F2 once and then we see that the nozzle area reverses and everything stays normal. So we go back again to idle and then we put again the, the 27 degree security nozzles uh, in the normal position we go back to the off testing and then we are good to go. Now, continue. The engine overheat slide should be off in two panels, control shift one and shift four. The engines overheat, uh, engines overheat here, they are off. We can check the lights so that you can compare off and on. And also, uh, there's another engines overheat here in this panel or shift four. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, yeah, these ones all are off, so no problem. Continue the center of gravity. We have to check that we are within the, the limit, and suspected by the car, we have you should have a center of gravity of 53.5. Now we can check the center of gravity here in this panel, so we can see it uh, that we have to be within these two limits between the forward and aft. Uh, okay, so the center of gravity is okay. Uh, continue. Now, uh, finally, the I can't remember what PFDIS stands for. Well, it's easier to show you than, than explain. Now, passengers had in the cabin display no entertainment or board. They had these two blank uh, panels where uh, passengers could see the distance remaining, the altitude, the speed, and the outside temperature. Now, uh, in with shift number seven, we've got 
uh, shift, number, no, shift, shift number six, we've got this uh, panel over here where we're going to tell our passengers uh, about our flight. So the distance from um, from London to New York is 3,000 and almost 19 nautical miles. So we click here, right click in distance to go, 2319. <coughs> Sorry. As I said at the beginning of the tutorial, I'm a teacher, and in winter, teachers' throats don't go very good. If you just go over 19, right click to go up, left click to go down. Now, once you've got 319 nautical miles, you right click this other uh, this other um, switch to convert to um, a statue miles, statical miles. And now this panel is on. Welcome to Concord. And now our passengers uh, will be able to see the um, distance, the remaining distance, the um, the altitude, uh, the outside temperature, speed, and well, all that kind of information. And I believe this is the last step between we can actually start our taxi. Now I'm going to be something um, because I've been stopped for much longer than than usually and than I should. Uh, I've burned very likely much more fuel than I should so I'm going to just reload the estimated fuel for Conco Performance System. So now I'm going to reload some fuel and now the center of gravity is very likely to change but during our taxi run the flight engineer should cope with it. So, ready to go. Uh, because taxi is a bit boring, I think I'm going to just stop. No, I'm going to do another thing. Uh, I'm going to continue the taxi, uh, but this is going to be the last part of the video. Um, as soon as I get into the runway, I'm going to start another video. So, if you just want to see me taxiing, uh, you can stay. If taxiing is just boring, just skip to the next part of the tutorial. So, see you in a moment. <laughs> 